eagle. Exodus 19 and 4. You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagle's wings, and brought you unto myself. Okay, what does eagle mean? God's protection, and he is always watching over you under the feathers of his wings, as in Psalm 17 and 8. Keep me as the apple of thy eye, hide me under the shadow of thy wings. It means protection, intuition, creativity, courage, hope, resilience, healing, vision. Okay, that's what an eagle means. So when you see it, it's very good. You're under God's protection and he's watching over you and you have a vision coming. All right, now the mockingbird. Mockingbird means understanding, innocence, a symbol of protection, cleverness, and the ability to communicate well qualities that can be an channeled for a covert fight. The mockingbird, is, the mockingbird is so called because of its ability to mimic the song of other birds. In fact, they have no call of their own. This way, they symbolize the power of the voice, its ability to draw or repel others to make or break situations and relationships. The voice can be used by the innocent to, pr to project pure heartedness and good intention. And it can also be used to rally people to rise up for a righteous cause. The sparrow. There you the, go. The small bird usually symbolizes joy and protection, but it can also be a symbol of simplicity and community, teamwork and hard work are what make the sparrows productive. Creativity, productivity, simplicity, diligence, pers persistence with the spirit guide in your life. You are able to express creativity, talent, and intelligence. The sparrow comes into your life to remind you to be happy. The goose. Loyalty, courage, devotion, fearlessness, bravery, valor. All right, the goose, very loyal to your friends and family. You see, the goose never leaves a member of the flock behind. It thrives on faithfulness. The geese migrate to warmer areas during winter. In case a member of the migration flock becomes injured, another member will leave the flock and take care of its fallen friend. The healthy goose will stick with the injured one until it recovers or dies. This is the spirit of a true comradeship. Co co comradeship that is common of people with the geese totem the goose has the bravery and confidence you need to succeed in life you get these qualities by associating with the spirit geese will fight to the death to protect the honor of their loved ones they start by displaying a fair show to ward off predators with their impressive scare tactics scare tactics they are rarely involved in physical fights per se they are hard working and quite productive Geese empowers people with spiritual enlightenment. As such, you are able to make sober decisions regarding both your career progress, progression and your family life. People with this are productive and fierce. Also, you are warm-hearted, brave, and loyal. Once the goose comes into your life, you become the true defender of the community. Also, you offer passionate leadership. When the goose comes into your life, you become very inspirational. People see you in a different light. It is no wonder then that you are often chosen as the leader in most meetings. The goose allows others to lead. You too will become very good at delegating authority. You won't find it hard to step back and allow others to take the lead. When the goose comes into your life, you are able to protect all that you hold dear. However, be careful that you don't waste your efforts on things that don't deserve to be protected. Duck. All right, period of growth. And transformation you go through in life to improve yourself and your life as well. They also symbolize releasing the old to make space for new things to come. Vigilance. Ducks are very vigilant animals because they have many predators. Make a commitment of stewardship to the world. We can all make a difference, not only for this generation, but for generations to come. 
All it takes is for you to do your part. So do your part. A bittern. Okay, a bittern, very rare for people to see in this age. But And I'll read it and I'll tell you why. I've seen it twice. Um, last year? Yeah, 2019. What's the strongest possible symbol for a life of solitude lived in under desolation? According to the Bible, it's the bittern, a fitting symbol of solitary life. The bittern is one of the most difficult birds to ever get a glimpse of. It dwells in wet, muddy, marshy places where the going is tough and every splashing, sucking step of a trespasser alerts the secretive bird into further retreat. Sun gazer is a direct translation from the bittern's name in many Native American um, history because they're always looking up, always looking at God, always looking up, right? The bittern of the Bible and of the real life is a loner, except for the brief encounters at mating season or when nesting. It even ensues the company of its own kind. Lightness, it means the symbol of a uh, bittern to see it means lightness, clo closeness to God, and removal from worldly concerns. And it's so obsessive about its privacy that it has a whole bag full of tricks to prevent it from ever being seen. Isaiah 14 and 23. So listen, what God's going to do when, when he destroys Babylon. Listen, I will also make it a possession for the bitter and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the bees of destruction, says the Lord. So when the Lord destroys Babylon, there's only a few things that are going to be living, and the bitter is one of them because it lives a solitary life, always looking up to him. Now, the starling bird. You must see this a lot. Go. Now, the starling. Starling teaches lessons of group etiquette, social standing, family relations, and how you appear to the world within those relationships. The starling singles the communication through vocalization. It's important in relationships, but be careful what you say, for people may take it incorrectly or blow it out of proportion. On the negative side, starlings are like sparrows, even worse, and that they can be nasty little Nazi stormtroopers invading neighborhood territories and seizing, seizing living space from peaceful native inhabitants. So like if you're going to get evicted or something, God will show you one of these birds. They can be vicious fighters and will evict even much larger nesting birds, tearing up their nests, breaking eggs and killing chicks. When starlings begin to gather, be prepared for a brutal invasion. Okay. Now, Isaiah 46 and 11. Now, showing you that God uses the birds. Call in a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executes my counsel from a far country. Yeah, I've spoken it, and I will also bring it to pass. I have proposed it, and I will also do it. And he's done it. Now, Ecclesiastes 10 and 20. Curse not the king, not in thy thought. And curse not the rich in thy bedchamber, for a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which has wings shall tell the matter. Okay? Proverbs 1 and 17. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, because people train birds. And um, that's why I'm going to read about the story of Cinderella, the real story of Cinderella, where the birds tell the prince what the, the, what the fake sisters did, you know? So I'm going to read about the hopo. That's going to be another bird, the bird who befriended King Solomon. But also Amos 3 and 5, can a bird fall into a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? So, and also I'm going to be talking about the bird of truth, but it's not going to fit in this video. So I'm going to cut it here and just look out.